All right, welcome in. It's another edition of FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined alongside uh, Jim Sonis here of Number Fire as we take a look here of the free agency winners. And uh, Lord knows there have been a few of them here, uh, Jim. It's been a very interesting, hey, uh, let's open up for business and let's go completely crazy in the NFL. As it is every single year, Joe, it's definitely been an interesting time for sure. A lot of offensive linemen getting paid, some big trades already, which I think is super interesting too. So, you know, we've got a sports void right now. The NFL is filling that pretty well, and it's nice to have a little bit of downtime to actually focus on the NFL here. So I think that this actually came at a pretty solid time, and I'm guessing that the, the players' pocketbooks would agree with that as well. I can guarantee you, yes, their pocketbooks are happy. So let's dive into a couple of players here. Right off the bat, some winners. I'll start with uh, Kyler Murray going into his second year with the Arizona Cardinals. I believe he should be celebrating the addition, the latest addition to the Cardinals team. Should he not? as a rookie, was throwing footballs to 36-year-old Larry Fitzgerald and a banged up Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk is a really good wide receiver, but that ankle injury was not fully healed the entire year. Now, who gets to throw to Christian Kirk fully healthy and DeAndre freaking Hoppins. That is a pretty major upgrade here for this wide receiver corpse, and it also helps that Kyler Murray did run quite a bit last year. Now, you look back to last year, the Cardinals weren't quite as pass-happy as you would have thought, given that they were an air raid offense. They weren't quite as fast as they were, at least at the beginning of the year. But now they should be more efficient because DeAndre Hopkins will be in town. That can allow Cliff Kingsbury to run his offense and be fully realized within this air raid scheme. That is a great thing for Kyler Murray if it leads to additional volume and additional efficiency as well. All that bodes well for him for this year. So you give him DeAndre Hopkins, that increases his efficiency. There could be additional volume as well. If they feel more confident in Kyler Murray as a passer, those are tremendous things for him for fantasy football. The only downside with Kyler Murray is that he was already pretty expensive. He was the quarterback six on fantasy football calculator based on early drafts so far going in about the sixth round. And that's a pretty high cost. But I think that with DeAndre Hopkins now in town, it further legitimizes that cost for Kyler Murray. So if you are someone who does, you know, spend a high draft pick on quarterbacks, Kyler Murray is worth that selection right now with this addition of DeAndre Hopkins. They also could add more via the draft. They still have the eighth overall pick there, whether it be an offensive lineman or another wide receiver at that point. So the situation for Murray is better, and it could get even more better as we advance further along in the offseason. So Kyler Murray, a big winner, and really legitimizing himself as a top six selection at quarterback for 2020. Yeah, Jim, it should be just fine as long as, you know, Cliff Kingsbury doesn't uh, doesn't screw it up for everybody else. Uh, all that talent, uh, get it done, Cliff, get it done. All right, let's head over to the Buffalo Bills, shall we? Josh Allen, he got himself a new toy as well over this free agency period. Yeah, he certainly did, and it's a good one. It's Stephon Diggs, and that's definitely a big addition for Josh Allen. Now, Based on what we've seen from Josh Allen each of the first two years in the league, he's exciting, he's fun to watch, but you can still have questions about his talent. His efficiency has not been good. Last year, he still ranked 27th in per dropback efficiency based on number fires metrics. And efficiency is huge for quarterbacks in fantasy football. And I had concerns about whether or not he'd be able to duplicate what he did in fantasy for this year, despite the presence of his rushing. But that was while throwing to John Brown and Cole Beasley. Now you give him John Brown and Stephon Diggs as his top two targets, and even if Josh Allen were the exact same quarterback next year as he was last year, his situation is now so much better that you would still expect his fantasy production and his production overall to tick up. So maybe Josh Allen regresses a bit from where he was last year. That's totally possible. He can still sustain his fantasy numbers just because the situation is better with Stephon Diggs. Quarterback output is wholly dependent on the situation around them. We saw that with Jared Goff earlier in his career, and I'm not comparing Josh Allen to Jared Goff because the two are very different as prospects coming out, but Jared Goff showed the value of good surrounding talent and Josh Allen's surrounding talent is better now than it was in the past. He is currently quarterback 11 on Fantasy Football Calculator. I think that is fully fine. I would expect his cost to go up with this addition to Stephon Diggs, but I think that's okay. He gives a lot of rushing juice. 
his efficiency may now be better than it was before. And there's, there's always that upside, too, that maybe he does wind up getting a little bit better. So I think the floor for Josh Allen is really good. The ceiling is getting better here with Stephon Diggs. So Josh Allen, already someone I was okay taking where he was going. But I think that even as the cost goes up, he's still worth it with Stephon Diggs now in town. You know, I can't wait to see what happens the, uh, the first time that he sees a wide open Stephon Diggs and then all of a sudden runs for 15 yards instead of throwing it to him. I can't wait to see what that looks like. But listen, the bottom line is weapons are important in the National Football League. And the Houston Texans next up got themselves a new weapon in a running back. And that running back would be David Johnson. Yeah, David Johnson, his situation changed about as radically as it possibly could for fantasy in the course of a couple of hours. Early Monday, they tagged Kenyon Drake, the Arizona Cardinals did, meaning he would still be around. David Johnson's fantasy value at that point was pretty much non-existent. Then he gets traded to the Houston Texans. Lamar Miller and Carlos Hyde are both free agents, and suddenly he's on a team that has a lot of opportunity up for grabs. So David Johnson goes from being pretty much dead in the water for fantasy to being a pretty legitimate fantasy football asset, and I would expect to be the main running back on this Houston Texans team. Now, watching David Johnson last year was admittedly quite painful. He did not look very good. There is a reason they traded for Kenyon Drake, but we have to remember that injuries played a big role in that because before David Johnson's back injury, which happened before his ankle injury, he was kind of playing okay. He had a 42% rushing success rate through the first five games. That's left roughly league average based on number fires metrics. And it fell to 30% after that back injury and got even worse once he had the ankle injury. So if we get a fully healthy David Johnson on this Texans team, I would expect the volume to be there. We can still have concerns around David Johnson's talent because he is entering, I believe, his age 29 season, so he's not a spring chicken anymore. And this Texans offense will take a step back with no DeAndre Hopkins in town. But opportunity tops everything in fantasy football. And on this new team, I would expect David Johnson to get a lot of volume. So it's a really good situation for David Johnson. I can't think of a way this would have played out better for him. That Texans offensive line played a lot better last year than it has in years past. Johnson, now healthy, has Deshaun Watson there. I think things are looking up for him, even though we could be pessimistic about this Texans team on the whole. I do think, too, Jim, that I don't think we have the whole story. I know a lot of people up in arms here, but I do believe uh, when it's all said and done, there was something else going on than just, hey, you know, what? it'd be great if we swapped uh, Hopkins for John. Like, no, there's I, I know a lot of people, Bill O'Brien, will look at him and go, ooh, Bill, but I tend to believe there is going to be something else there uh, that we did not know about. But we do have another running back, of course, uh, that love that move for David Johnson, again with the Arizona Cardinals, and this time we're looking at Kenyon Drake, who's got to be ecstatic about this opportunity as well. Absolutely, because not only did he show up last year, but now he actually gets a better situation because with DeAndre Hopkins in town, we can expect this Cardinals offense to improve, and what that does is it increases the touchdown expectation for everybody in this offense. And that does include Kenyon Drake, who had a tremendous role down the stretch last year for the Cardinals. He averaged 15.4 rushes and 4.4 targets per game after joining Arizona last year. And now I would not expect those numbers to go up, even though David Johnson is now down, now gone and it's just Chase Edmonds there besides Kenyon Drake, because Kenyon Drake, even in Alabama and in his early days with the, with the Dolphins, was usually used as a change of pace type back. I'm not expecting to be a 20 carry, eight target type guy. Most people are, but I would not expect that workload to go up. But if we assume that Kenyon Drake's workload remains the same, gets about 15 carries and five targets per game, that's a very legitimate workload for a running back in fantasy football. That offensive line in Arizona played pretty well from a run blocking perspective last year. They could beef that up even more in the draft as well with that eighth overall pick. And now they add DeAndre Hopkins into the mix. An additional year of Kyler Murray. This is all really good. I think this is all great for Kenyon Drake. Extra volume, the volume shored up with David Johnson being gone. Potentially extra touchdowns for the offense. 
He was a sixth round pick in redraft before this trade. I would expect that to go up. But even with that being the case, he is still a player on which you want to buy high because the situation as things stand right now looks tremendous for fantasy in 2020. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. It wasn't right for him in Miami, uh, but it seems to be heading in uh, the right direction there, certainly with Arizona. Going to be a lot of fun to see the kind of year that he has. Uh, and we do, of course, have uh, there's some other collateral damage well maybe not but how about will fuller he now all of a sudden heads into the spotlight and it's uh, it's funny jim i almost pulled a hamstring just saying his name but uh, will fuller and the houston texans gonna be a number one now is he not yeah, at least when he's out there, which, you know, like you said, may not be all that often. But when Will Fuller is healthy, he's in a pretty good position. It's always a good thing for a wide receiver in fantasy when a guy with the usage of DeAndre Hopkins leads town, leaves town. Because those targets have to go somewhere, and a lot of them could go Will Fuller's direction, given how good he has been when he has been on the field in the NFL. Last year in the games that Will Fuller played, he had 23% of the Texans' total targets and 37% of their targets at least 16 yards downfield. Those are really good numbers to begin with. But with Hopkins leaving town, that vacates 29% of their overall targets and 29% of their deep targets in the games that Will Fuller played. That's a lot of opportunity. Now, maybe not all that goes to Will Fuller, but what could happen is he could get some more underneath targets, some more high leverage, uh, some more... I should say some more high percentage targets, which would increase his floor. Will Fuller has always been a high ceiling guy for fantasy because he can get big plays. He can score touchdowns. The ceiling has never been a question. The floor has. But now, if he gets additional targets and additional safer, safer targets with DeAndre Hopkins out of town, that's going to amp up his floor. So from a fantasy perspective, what we have is basically a safer version of Will Fuller than we had in the past when he is healthy. That ceiling will still be very good. But... If the floor gets better, he becomes a lot more valuable of a fantasy commodity because you know what to expect on a week-by-week -week basis. Will Fuller, I think that the injuries are a legitimate concern, but those injuries will also help keep the cost tied to him in fantasy intact. I don't think we're going to see a major, major spike in the draft cost because people are so scared of the injuries. That's good for me. If Will Fuller gets hurt, I'm not getting a zero out of my wide receiver slot. I can use someone else in there. So I don't think it's as big of a negative to draft a an injury risk like him, knowing that I can use at least a replacement level guy to fill in that production. I want that Will Fuller production we'll get when he's out there. I think it's super valuable. And I think it could go up this year. So Will Fuller, yeah, it's scary. It is risky. But I think it's worth it with all the volume DeAndre Hopkins has left on the table. And there's just something about having that guy that can take the top off a secondary to have him lining up healthy on the outside. The ultimate home run hitter for uh, for any team offensively. Uh, he, he stays healthy, always somebody that you've got to be very well aware of where they are on the field. Defenses, yeah, a lot of headaches, a lot of sweating overnight going on with Will Fuller. Which brings us, of course, to uh, to one of our final winners here of free agency. How about Adam Thielen now picking up the pieces left by Stefan Diggs, who is on his way to the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen? What do you think about uh, Adam Thielen this year and the Minnesota Vikings? Yeah, it's the exact same thought process we had with Will Fuller, except outside of 2019, not as many injuries for Adam Thielen as with Will Fuller. Now, I would expect the offensive efficiency to decline for both the Texans and for the Vikings, given that they did lose star wide receivers. But that's not as big of a concern for these guys as it is for their quarterbacks and Deshaun Watson and Kirk Cousins. So Adam Thielen figures to move into really good volume. And when Thielen was healthy last year, that volume was there as well. Before his injury, Thielen had 26% of the Vikings' overall targets and 52% of their deep targets. If we had gotten that for the full season, Adam Thielen would have been among the best fantasy wide receivers in the entire league because that is tremendous volume to get. He also plays indoors, which I love. And now there's no more Stephon Diggs. Their depth chart behind Adam Thielen is basically the shining with the, the elevator doors opening. It is not good outside of Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith at tight end. They're going to have to throw the ball somewhere. And I'd expect a lot of those targets to go to Adam Thielen. Now, 
I would expect the Vikings to add a wide receiver through the draft. They have picks 22 and 25. There will be good wide receivers there. They're going to add to this room. But Thielen is a known commodity. He's been with Kirk Cousins now for two years. He's developed a, rep a rapport with him. And the Vikings can build around this guy as a wide receiver. Adam Thielen is currently a fourth-round pick in fantasy for next year. I am very okay paying that. I would expect his cost to go up as well. But as with Kenyon Drake... That's okay. There is a reason for that cost to go up. And we can still buy into it despite the increased cost. So for both Kenny and Drake and Adam Thielen, I know that I'm going to have to pay more, but I'm okay with that because of what they bring to the table and because of the volume I would expect them to get this upcoming year. Adam Thielen has shown in the past he can be a top-end fantasy wide receiver, and I would not be surprised if he does that once again this year. And, and remember, uh, Minnesota fans, you got a number one draft pick in return for uh, heading out digs. This draft is loaded with wide receivers, so not saying you're going to get a Stephon Diggs, but having that number one pick in the asset, of course, will go a long way. Adam Thielen and whoever they draft, in all likelihood, will be just fine. All right, Jim Sonis, number fire, my friend. Thank you so very much for sharing with us. The winner is here of this, uh, this early free agency in the NFL. We'll be back tomorrow, of course, with losers. So, Jim, appreciate the time. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you as well. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully the rest of free agency is as fun as it's been so far. Appreciate it. All right, I'm Joe Ranieri. This is FanDuel. Hurry up. We'll be back tomorrow with the free agency losers. Enjoy your day.